Argentinosaurus hyncoliensis was a large sauropod dinosaur belonging to a group known as Titanosauria, which is what some of the largest dinosaurs belong to. Discovered in 1987 by Shepard Guillermo Heredia, Argentinosaurus hyncoliensis was named and described by Rodolfo Correa and Jose Bonaparte in 1993. Argentinosaurus means Argentine lizard, and Huancheoliensis referring to either the town Plaza Huancol in Argentina or the Huancol Formation where it was found, meaning the full name translates to Huancol's Argentine lizard. When Bonaparte and Courier published their description of the animal, it was quickly picked up by the press, who advertised it as the largest dinosaur ever and by extension, the largest terrestrial animal ever. However, there has been a lot of debate over this, with weight estimates being as low as 50 to as large as 100 metric tons, and a length of anywhere between 25 and 52 meters. More modern estimates suggest somewhere between 70 and 80 metric tons and 25 to 35 meters, However, these aren't exactly concrete estimates themselves, since Argentinosaurus is only known from 13 bones. And as pointed out by a live science article I read through, some sketches show a femur bone. However, this femur was allegedly found 15 kilometers or about 9 miles away from the other bones, so it might not belong to the same animal. And according to extinctanimals.org, a leg bone they did find with the animal later turned out to be a large fossilized tree stump. However, DinoPit.com claims they found a monster of a tibia of the animal, which Guillermo Heredia mistaken for a tree trunk at first, but then realised it was a fossilised bone, which is what led him to call up Rodolfo and Jose in the first place. Anyway, the fragmentary nature of the animal makes it somewhat frustrating to get an accurate idea of the animal's true size meaning that Argentinosaurus, Patagotitan, Australotitan, Paralotitan, or any other sauropod could be the largest animal to ever walk the Earth. If you want a general overview of this rabbit hole, I recommend checking out the Budget Museum's video on this subject, which will be linked in the description alongside all the other sources I use. Alongside that can of worms I partially opened but will try and keep at least partly sealed for another time, one study conducted in 2013 tried to estimate the speed of Argentinosaurus. The model they made, based on one mounted in a museum, weighed roughly 83 metric tons and got to a speed of 7.2 kilometers an hour. As I mentioned earlier, we only have 13 bones of the animal, so a more complete skeleton would be needed to truly conduct a study like this. The authors did recognise this flaw and stated the model could have been improved in many ways besides us needing to find more fossils. Alongside that, a 2016 study found the eggs of the animal to be roughly 5 kilograms, a metre in diameter, and have a volume of 1 litre, meaning you'd probably need only one of them for a large omelette. It's believed that due to them being pretty much defenceless when young, Argentinosaurus, as shown from fossilized nests of closely related species, would have bred a lot to compensate for this. Sauropod child deaths would be extremely high, but ones that do make it to adulthood would breed as much as possible, so these high death rates would be easily compensated. Sauropods like Argentinosaurus really only had their size to protect themselves, so it's easy to see why this is the case. Alongside this, it's believed that the ones who reached the 70 to 80 metric ton size reached this fairly quickly. According to the Planet Dinosaur book I have, it's believed they could put on roughly 40 kilograms or about 88.1 pounds a day while growing, with massive growth spurts happening on top of that. It's believed they could reach their full size by the time they're 25 years old. Also, just as something to give you guys a bit of a laugh, according to rareresources.com, Korea jokingly said, God forbid we ever find a whole one, to National Geographic, who were covering the discovery of Argentinosaurus. And it's easy to see why he said that. According to one book I have, it took a group of five men to dig out a large chunk of rock and get it into position for a crane to pick it up. This one chunk of rock contained only one vertebrae, which was 1.6 meters tall and 1.3 meters wide. And that's just one vertebrae. 
When fully grown, Argentinosaurus wouldn't have much to fear, with the only threats to adults being the apex predator of the time, Mapusaurus. Some of you might point out some sources I'm using stated it lived with Giganotosaurus, not Mapusaurus. However, according to what I've read and watched online, Giganotosaurus is from a different fossil formation, meaning it didn't live with Argentinosaurus. However, Mapusaurus did, so I recommend checking out my Mapusaurus video after this. Cheeky little promotion out of the way, it's believed that if Mapusaurus did target Argentinosaurus, they would be either juveniles or sick or wounded adults, and that if they did dare try to take on a healthy adult, they'd work in a loose gang to take it down. Even then, it would still take considerable effort to bring such a giant animal down. In terms of diet, it's believed Argentinosaurus would have fed primarily on vegetation, such as ferns, using small, pencil-like teeth to rip off leaves from trees and bushes, before swallowing. It's also believed the long neck, like that of other sauropods, would have helped the animal reach for high up plants or graze on large plains without having to move much to get a lot of food, which is one of the things that helped them reach their massive size. In terms of popular appearances in media, due to how popular the dinosaur is itself, there's a lot of media appearances including but not limited to numerous documentaries such as Planet Dinosaur and Giants of Patagonia, and kids shows such as Dinosaur Train and Andy's Prehistoric Adventures. In Andy's Prehistoric Adventures, they used Planet Dinosaur's model. Alongside that, Argentinosaurus also has appeared in games such as Prehistoric Kingdom as a 5-star dinosaur, and in Jurassic World the game as one of the first dinosaurs you can get early on. Personally, I'm not a big fan of any of the designs, and I can't really say how accurate they are since Argentinosaurus is a fairly fragmentary animal. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Let me know about any dinosaurs you'd like to see me cover in the future. However, I do plan to finish off that poll I did a few weeks back and cover the King Brown and Coastal Taipan. So see you then. Perhaps another giant will be next on the list for dinosaurs to cover. Or something else entirely.